Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Pearl. I'm your friend, your host Roy. You know that we have started a brand new series, Series 1, where we're discussing real numbers. In today's episode, we are going to do a quick recap of different types of real numbers, that is natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, so on and so forth. So friends, let's get started. Now, you would recall that in our last season, in the first series, we had learned a lot about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. So we have actually gone through about 47 webisodes to understand all of these numbers in a lot more details. I'm going to provide you the link to all those videos down below. If you need to look look them up in detail, please feel free to click the link and check out those uh, videos. If, for the purposes of this video, this webisode, we are going to just do a quick recap only. So that's it friends, let's take a look at each of these numbers. I have drawn here some sample objects and the reason why I have drawn them is let's try to make a count of them. So the first row is basically a set of ladybugs. I've tried to do as uh, I've tried to draw some ladybugs here. Let's count how many of them are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we said there are ten ladybugs. How many bees or bees are there? There's only one small bee. How many ducks do we see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ducks. How many double decker buses are here? There are two of them. And how many red color balls? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we said there are eleven red color balls. So the friends, the reason I have given you all this uh, simple tasks is to emphasize the point that when we count something, these numbers, that is number one, two, three, four, five, they come naturally to us. So this collection of numbers, that is, I'm going to write them as number one, two, three, so on and so forth, all the way to plus infinity. These numbers, the collection of these numbers, the collection is called natural number, and we represent them with uppercase n. Now, when we add the number 0 to this collection, that is, if I add the number 0 to the collection n, that is, this is the number 0, I want to add the number 0, to the collection of natural numbers, then I get a whole new collection, which is called whole numbers, represented by uppercase W. So this is a uppercase N, this is a uppercase W. So friends, these are the collections of natural numbers and whole numbers. Now here I have drawn a number line. So I start with zero, go on my plus side, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way till plus infinity. Then on the negative side, minus 1, minus 2, minus 6, etc., all the way to minus infinity. Now, this collection of numbers, that is the positive numbers, the number 0, and all the negative numbers, that is the positive numbers and the negative numbers combined together, expanding from minus infinity to 0 to plus infinity, this collection is called integer. And we represent integer by uppercase letter Z or Z. So this basically represents a collection where we start from minus infinity, then we go all the way to zero, and then we go all the way to plus infinity. So this collection is called as integer. So if you were to just quickly recap the natural numbers, whole numbers, the integers, we will say natural numbers are numbers one, two, three, four, etc., which are all positive numbers represented by n. Whole numbers, we add the number 0 to the collection of natural numbers. That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That collection is called whole numbers. We represent it by uppercase w. Integers are all negative numbers, the number 0, and then all positive numbers. Everything put together is called integer, and we represent the collection integer by uppercase letter z or z. Now here, friends, I have drawn the number line one more time. We have also seen that between any two integers, whether I want to take a look at between 1 and 2, or 2 and 3, or minus 2 and minus, uh, 
minus 2 minus 3. It doesn't matter between any between any two consecutive integers, we have infinite number of numbers. So what do I mean by that? Let's draw, uh, let's, let's expand. Let's say this is my number 1 and this is my number 2. Now, between these two, so I have just tried to zoom in between this gap here, right, between 1 and 2. Let's just, you know, assume that this is a magnified version. So between these two, I can find the midpoint. I can find another number which will be halfway between 1 and 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3 by 2. This number will be 3 by 2. Similarly, between 1 and 3 by 2, I can find another number which will be halfway between this. Similarly, between 3 by 2 and 2, I can find out another number which is halfway between this. So in a way, I can continue this process for infinite number of times. And each time that I do it, I'm going to keep finding these new numbers. So when we draw number line, we see basically the integers. It doesn't mean they are the only numbers. We also have these numbers, which are of the form p by q. Basically, they are expressed as fractions or as ratios. So any number that can be expressed in the form of p divided by q, where both p and q are integers. So in this case, it is 3 and 2. And q should not be equal to 0. So these collection or collection of these numbers are called rational numbers. And like I said, there will be infinite number of rational numbers. So quick recap on rational numbers. So rational number is any number that can be expressed in the form of P by Q, where both P and Q are integers and Q not equal to zero. Like I said, it can be uh, uh, some numbers like positive, like three by two, five by eight, minus 3 by 5, they, they could be also negative numbers because they exist on both the plus uh, side of the number line uh, as well as on the number, uh, the negative side. And we represent all the rational numbers by uppercase Q. There are infinite number of rational numbers. Now, friends, believe it or not, there is one final type of numbers. We call them irrational numbers. And what are they? They are numbers that we cannot that we cannot express in the form of p by q where both p q are integers and q not equal to zero so you may be wondering what can those numbers be how they look like we have seen that there are numbers like square root 2 square root 3 square root 5 square root 7 so on and so forth these numbers we really cannot express them in the form of p by q right? Where both p and q are integers and q not equal to zero. If I look at each of these numbers, I cannot express these numbers in this form. Now, if I were to just look at an integer, for example, let's say my integer is 5, I can express 5 as 5 divided by 1, right? Or if I have minus 2 as my integer, I can write minus 2 as minus 2 divided by 1. That is all the all the integers are rational numbers. All the integers are rational numbers. But these numbers, I cannot express them in the form of p by q. So this is a separate collection, and we call this collection irrational numbers. Now, the collection of all rational numbers, and we just saw that rational, rational numbers basically include all integers, all natural numbers, all whole numbers, plus the numbers that live in between the consecutive, uh, any consecutive integers. Any number that can be expressed in the form p by q, p and q both integers, and q not equal to zero are called rational numbers. And then we saw these are the numbers that cannot be expressed in the form p by q, like square root 2, square root 3, square root 5, etc. If I were to combine these two sets, or these two collections I call, I get what we call real numbers, which we express uppercase letter R. So friends, this is a quick recap. In the next video, we are going to take a look at Euclid's division lemma.